since I picked up a Switch OLED a few months back, I've tested a lot of third-party accessories. And given the sheer number of products floating out there on the market, it can be a bit of a challenge to find the diamonds in the rough. So I put together a list of quality of life products that I personally had a ton of success with. Now, a few of these items will also work with the original Switch as well, but everything that you'll see throughout this video is guaranteed to be supported for the OLED model specifically. If at any point you see anything that you like, make sure to check out the description for a number of codes and savings for a limited time. That said, let's get into the video. Following my review of the Switch OLED, I received a lot of questions about the classic NES style skins. These Play Vital skins are made by a company called Gaming Cobra and they come in a variety of designs and colors. You probably heard of Extreme Rate before, which also has a line of console and controller accessories. Well, Play Vital and Extreme Rate are technically under the same umbrella, just different branding. The Play Vital protective skins ship as several sheets with pre-applied adhesive that doesn't leave behind residue when removed. The sheets encompass everything that you need for all-around protection for your Switch, the Joy-Con controllers, and even the dock station if you desire. The skin for the console itself is comprised of two parts. The first piece covers the entire backside, with the exception of the aluminum stand, as well as the borders around the OLED display. And the second skin is solely for the aluminum stand. There's also a dedicated skin for each Joy-Con, and as you can see, the cutouts for all parts are precise. So guys, I have three different sets of Joy-Con thumb grips in hand. We have the Rise Pads grips from Satisfy, which retails for $39.99 and ships with a pair of notch thumb grips, a pair of wave grips, and a single swivel thumb grip. We also have the Play Vital thumb grip set, which retails for $9.99 and ships in pairs of two that are identical to one another. And finally, Skull & Co, which also retails for $9.99, but ships with three pairs in a single set, dome-shaped, concave center, and a dome-shaped design that's literally double-stacked. The Rise Grips by Satisfy are without a doubt the most intricate of the bunch with the most unique designs I've honestly ever seen on the market to date. If you look closely, the Satisfy logo itself is used to create the traction grooves that are covering each grip. Satisfy even offers Rise Grips that work for Nintendo Switch Pro and DualSense controllers. The Play Vital Grips, on the other hand, are comprised of a much softer silicone material and are best suited for those who want protection for the thumb grips without skewing too far away from the original Switch design. There are no ridges or grooves to speak of, just a very simplistic build that comes closest in appearance and feel to the real thing. The Skull & Co thumb grips really sort of sit in the middle of the pack. Design and ergonomics aren't quite as drastic as with the Rise grips, but they are a step up from Play Vital. They're comprised of a TPE rubber material that's a lot more rigid than the silicone material that's used for Play Vital. And you'll notice that each of the three designs have a moderately aggressive texture pattern all the way around the brim, which I really, really do like, but the center point is unfortunately smooth to the touch. You can even build up on the double stack grips to further customize ergonomics. Overall, I really like that the Play Vital and Skull & Co grips come in a ton of different colors to mix and match and coincide with Joy-Cons whereas the Satisfy grips are only being offered in black at the moment. However, if I had to pick a single pair to rule them all, with comfort and ergonomics at the forefront, for me, it would have to be the Satisfy Wave Pads. The original Nintendo Switch dock is without a doubt the best option for transporting your games from console to big screen. And while on that front, if you've ever been concerned about dust, pet hair, or scratches during long periods of absence, this vinyl dust cover from Play Vital is a great option. It has a double layer design and is machine washable. Now, there are two scenarios where the Nintendo Switch dock station may cause some headache. The first is that the dock isn't very portable for travel. And second, some protective cases will either not work properly or cause the Switch screen to rub up against the interior. A heavy duty screen protector like the one that I'm using will certainly help. But if you've ever wanted a single solution to solve both of these issues, then these two third party travel docks are definitely worth checking out. This is the Skull & Co Jumpgate dock station. It's USB PD compliant and is compatible with both the Switch OLED as well as the original Switch. This is one of the most dynamic Switch dock stations on the market to date. The dock features a space adjustment on the underside to allow the dock to accommodate protective cases. And if you happen to be using a case with very bulky grips, you can even flip out a kickstand to provide more clearance between the grips and the tabletop surface. But the Jumpgate has yet another trick up its sleeve and that is that it also features a detachable hub system. 
Upon detaching the core piece from the jump gate, this device serves as a 6-in-1 multi-port hub that can be used with your PC, Mac, or even a cell phone. So this is truly a multi-purpose device, even capable of firmware updates via the Skull & Co. website. This second third-party dock is from a company called Kiwi Home. What sets this miniature device apart from many others is that the 39-watt power adapter is literally built into the dock itself. Unlike the jump gate, for example, which requires a separate charger in order to power it, the Kiwi Home dock requires nothing more than an HDMI cable and this included USB-C cable, which has a high-quality build, allowing for a single solution for quick charging as well as a video signal to transmit the image. I know that there was a huge issue in the past with some third-party docks breaking consoles following an update, but you can look at my Switch as the guinea pig because I've been using the Kiwi Home dock for over two months now without restriction, and I haven't had a single issue. So a lot of evenings, I'll dock my Switch to the TV inside my bedroom, and as we know, the best way to play the Switch docked is using a Pro Controller, but I only have one, which stays inside my office for the most part, and I didn't want to cough up another 70 bucks for a second Pro Controller. So over a month ago, I picked up this third-party controller from YCC Team for only 20 bucks. This controller supports NFC, wake mode, amiibo, and it even has dual motors for realistic rumble feedback. When I was shopping for this third-party controller, I wanted something simplistic. I wasn't looking for turbo buttons or anything of the like, so I didn't have to relearn the button layout, and this 110% fit the bill. In fact, this mode is so on par with the real thing that it even fits this travel protective case from TomTok perfectly. And the only real gripe that I have overall is that each charge will last about 10 hours as opposed to the ridiculous 40-hour estimate for the official Pro Controller. But at this price point, I really can't complain. And finally, we come to what is probably the most essential Switch accessories for added protection and comfort during handheld use. We have the Satisfy Zen Grip Pro Slim Bundle, which retails for $49.99, the Skull & Co. Grip Case Bundle, which retails for $42.99, and the Skull & Co. Neo Grip Bundle, which retails for $39.99. Each of these protective cases were specifically designed with the Nintendo Switch OLED in mind, and they each have their own set of strengths and weaknesses. The first pro for the Satisfy Zen Grip is that it can seamlessly accommodate both the original and OLED Switch models using the free float technology that's made possible by the inner silicone tabs and bumpers. The Skull & Co. Neo Grip can also accommodate the OLED and original model as well. However, it does require removal of a couple of micro screws, which means that swapping switches will be a bit more cumbersome. The next benefit for the Satisfy Grip is that the back of the grips themselves have a rubber coating, which feels very nice in the hand, and they're slightly less prone to slipping over time versus the plastic grips for the Skull & Co. cases. The Satisfy grips are also asymmetrical, with the left grip being slightly shorter and wider, while the right is slightly longer and narrower. The idea behind this design is to allow for better angling of your right hand as your thumb works the stick. This design definitely improves ergonomics. However, one drawback is that those with smaller hands may find them a bit too large. And these grips are not replaceable as with the two Skull & Co. variations. Skull & Co. grips ship with three pairs of unique sizes, small, medium, and large, giving you much more flexibility. And you'll even be able to simulate the asymmetrical grip for the Satisfy by attaching the medium-sized grip on the left and the large on the right. Though in my opinion, this off-kilter grip isn't quite as comfortable as with the Satisfy Zen Grip. As for the overall body build, the Zen Grip is much more rigid and has little to no flex, while the comparable Neo Grip isn't quite as thick and does have a lot of flex. The Neo Grip also requires a separate part to secure the switch that's pretty easy to lose if you aren't careful. So Satisfy definitely gets the edge for build quality. However, the fact that the Neo Grip doesn't block the switch aluminum kickstand is a major advantage over Satisfy. Even though the Zen Grip does not accommodate the built-in stand, it's a really nice touch that Satisfy offers some form of an alternative with the two plastic support legs at the base, though the angle of the screen cannot be adjusted if you're looking down at your switch. But nevertheless, if you place the switch a bit further back from your position, it works really well for watching media such as trailers and YouTube. But hands down, the biggest drawback for the Satisfy Zen Grip is that it doesn't accommodate the original dock station or even the Skull & Co. jump gate, at least not in the traditional sense. Using the jump gate adapter is a pretty solid workaround to avoid having to remove the case every time. And the Kiwi Home dock design works perfect for the Zen Grip as well, using the provided right angle cable. 
Both of the Skull & Co cases on the other hand work just fine for the Nintendo dock, though you may have to seat the console down with a bit more pressure. But honestly, if you want the smoothest operation for day-to-day -day use, I highly recommend the jump gate, which is perfectly engineered for both the Neo Grip and the Grip case. I really, really like this system, and I'm wishing that Satisfied would release their own Grip case specific dock. But if you're still feeling confused about which case will work best for you, if protection is your highest priority above all else, then the grip case is probably your best bet out of the three. The TPU body surrounds the entire backside and borders of the console, and it even features floating shoulder buttons to protect the L and R buttons in the event of a drop. And the TPU is advertised to resist yellowing better than previous models. Switching gears to the carry cases themselves, the Satisfy Zen Grip bundle ships with a slim carry case, and the Skull & Co bundles both ship with a much larger travel size case. I really like the design and quality of both, but I have to give a slight edge to Satisfy for a few additional quality of life features. The first being that the case can accommodate a shoulder strap if desired. Secondly, a USB-C charge cable is included inside. And lastly, the case features a velvet interior with a custom Zen Grip mode. Surprisingly enough, this custom mold can accommodate both the Skull & Co grips as well, though they obviously aren't a perfect fit. But the Skull & Co carry case, despite being larger, cannot accommodate the Satisfy Zen Grip. Both cases can accommodate up to 10 physical games. However, the Skull & Co carry case has a little trick up its sleeve and that it can be used as a kickstand. And being nearly twice as thick as the Satisfy Slim case, it can obviously accommodate a lot more stuff. You can fit spare grips or even the jump gate dock, for example. But what do you guys think? Are you Team Skull & Co, Team Satisfy, or do you land somewhere in the middle? It's clear that both companies put a ton of thought and passion into these products, so there's no wrong answer here. Again, if anything caught your eye throughout this video, hit the description to learn more. As always, thank you for watching and supporting the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one.